Hello and welcome to this week's episode of The Shooting Show. On this week's episode we'll be joining Tom Payne as he catches up with some pigeons over some clover and then we join Mark as he tests out the latest from Pulsar and now we join Mark as he catches up with a fox that's been doing some damage to some lambs. Let's see how he gets on in this next video. Right, so this evening I'm again watching out over the lambing fields. This is a piece of Gary's ground that I've come down to just give my hand to thin a few foxes out. So this evening I'm um, using all Pulsar stuff. I've got the Pulsar mergers, thermal um, binoculars here, and I've also got the Pulsar Duo. So I've got a nice complete thermal setup. Um, we've had a good old thin out on the foxes lately, we've hammered an awful lot on this ground but we've uh, lost a lamb in this field last night so I'm standing here, I've got a good view out across the banks in front in amongst the uh, ewes and uh, lambs here. Um, it's also a good spot here because uh, foxes tend to come down, there's like a little sort of cut through if you like between the, um, the bushes over the back there and foxes tend to come down across the road which is just next to me and come down through this valley. So where I'm at the top here I've got a good view out over a fair bit of it. So hopefully before long we'll get something come through. Right, so Gary, he stood up um, the far end of this field looking over the next valley over and um, he's just texted me and told me that there's a fox coming over this way. But I can't see it yet. Keep my eyes peeled. Get the rifle any other way, ready. Oh, yeah, here he comes over the top of the hill. Right. Hey! Sweet. That's the first one down. Excellent. Top out, last song was out. So that one came in nice and close, it was only about 80 yards. Um, he ran for a little bit, but he didn't go far. He only went probably 30, 40 yards down the bank, not even that probably, and then just went over. We'll leave him there for a minute and see what else it's about.
はい Right, so once again, that was like a repeat performance of the last one. Fox came over the hill, Gary gave me a shout and said, Fox incoming, and uh, turned the rifle around. Sure enough, Fox was coming over the top again. And uh, that one came in, it was just trotting straight down towards me, didn't he? He's call it nothing. It was just coming straight down, well, basically towards this valley fully used. Um, got to within 65 metres of me, bang, thump, down it went. So another one to the uh, Pulsar uh, duo there, and uh, second one for the evening, all in about half an hour, so good start. So I've got another fox right out the back there, he's at 500 metres. And keep an eye on him, see if he wanders in this direction. He's a bit far at the minute to walk out to. On these hills now, you start walking out to him, you lose sight of them over a brow of a hill, and then you get over that hill after walking half a mile, and you look around and it's in the next valley, so you better off waiting until they come in a bit closer before we try and walk out to them. It's surprising just how much ground a fox can cover in a short space of time. Is absolutely mad. I'd literally just turn around a quick look with the um, mergers just scanning round, and there was another fox sniffing the last one I shot not more than probably 10 minutes ago, and it was just standing there sniffing it. And that was, I'd say, about 65 metres that last one. Um, <coughs> so I just turned around, got on the rifle, bang, thing, <coughs> off the one down. So that's three, and I've been out an hour now. Crazy. Let's keep my arms peeled. Absolutely no idea where that one came from either. It was just there. It must have, well, it was facing back up towards the road. So I'm thinking maybe it'd uh, come up out the valley, but I didn't see it coming in. Going a little bit quiet after that initial flurry we had first thing. It's starting to get a bit cold too. To really make matters worse, I left my licorice all sorts in the truck as well. <laughs> How stupid! <laughs> Gutted. All right, well, it's a bit quiet. I'll walk over and have a look at these foxes, see what we've uh, shot. And that is a big dog fox, quite a dark one as well. A big uh, hole out of him there. So uh, a few working parts hanging out there as well by the looks of it. So it's made quite a mess of that one, but uh, that's one very dead dog fox. Good. Oh, that's one, the other two. And there's the other two, exactly where they fell. So this one was the first one. That was a vixen. A big hole out of that. And then this one, was the one that came in afterwards, and that's also a vixen, or a small one. And again, made a mess of that one. So, three foxes down. I've not seen anything else in this valley about the last hour, so it's gone a little bit quieter here. But I've heard a couple of shots from Gary, and knowing how well Gary shoots, there'll be a couple of foxes in the bag, no doubt. 
Well, that's three foxes down this evening to the Pulsar Duo. Not that was much of a test for the scope or the rifle for that matter. They were all within 80 yards. Um, I haven't really said an awful lot about the Duo. I've literally just cracked on and used it. It's a good little bit of kit. It's just like the Pulsar Thermians. Um, if you ever used any Pulsar gear, you know the menu system. They're all much the same. Uh, this one, very straightforward to use. All your main controls on the eyepiece there, 30 millimeter tube. Um, rechargeable plus a uh, extra battery you can drop in the top there um, now obviously this is a thermal scope which is how we've been using it this evening what I haven't mentioned is it's also got a colour day screen in there so you can use the little inbuilt colour um, digital camera in the top here and you can change between uh, thermal and digital colour image um, you can also use the picture in picture mode so you can combine the two as well so it's a very good useful little scope this uh, very handy for those that maybe do a lot of stalking and a little bit of foxing that kind of thing yes yeah, it kind of covers all bases so it's been good to, uh, been good this evening on the uh, 223 so yeah i hope you've enjoyed watching the footage anyway that's it for this week so i hope you've enjoyed the episode please subscribe and thanks for watching next up we're off to join tom payne in his bit of permission near oxfordshire warwickshire tom has set up in the most perfect conditions so let's hope he manages to bag himself quite a large bag Hi, my name is Tom Payne and welcome to The Shooting Show. Today you find me on a dairy farm on the Oxfordshire, Warwickshire border. Uh, today we're going to be shooting over some clover. Over the last few weeks, apart from those early drillings, um, sort of, well, very early, beginning of uh, February, some switched onto them, some didn't. Uh, they've hit back on the green stuff and with this consistent amount of rain we've just had recently, you will find um, birds putting onto clover, especially grazed clover, etc. Uh, yes, yeah, so there's a belt of trees uh, in the bottom of the valley, which is sort of their natural line. Now, I've tried and tried and tried to pull them off it, and so far I haven't succeeded. Last year, they came no problem. Same few fields. There's one just floating up now. And I've just pulled myself out of the wind. So there's one just coming in here now, just looking at the flapper. Here we go. So effectively, that's what I'm going to try to make them. I've put myself in a spot, I'm hoping that these are the draw. The wind's so strong, I pull them out of the wind. You know, we've been sitting down 20 minutes and that's just drifted down. Uh, I'm only using a single flapper. Flappers work really well uh, on clover. When you see them, they feed in small groups, uh, not sort of, you know, I mean, yes, they will build to big numbers, but when you'll see them, you'll see them feeding in small groups. Single flapper, single uh, dead bird, and I'm just going to gently build it as we go. And hopefully, I will win this afternoon. Come on then, sweetheart.
I'm getting caught out a little bit, just if Ollie shows you, there's just a window up here. I pulled myself off this belt of trees. There's a window just through here, and they just sort of skirt around the back of this old oak. Um, yeah, I've been caught out by a couple. Um, but so far, so good. If they come straight down the valley there, it's absolutely glorious shooting. You see the contours of the ground, it's sort of, they come sort of, you know, real hug in the deck and makes for good shooting. That brings us to the end of play. Um, it's been a really good couple of hours. I'm gonna call this one a draw. I wouldn't say it's a win, but it's definitely a draw. Um, not too sure what we've shot, as I forgot my clicker. Um, I know at the end of the day, once I finish picking up, but thanks very much for joining guys. I look forward to the next episode and see everybody soon. Cheers. Great to see the birds returning for Tom there. Well, sadly, that's all we've got time for on this week's episode of The Shooting Show. Make sure you like and subscribe for some more videos. And if you're not a member of Basque, now's the time to join. My name's Chris Castle, and this has been The Shooting Show. If you aren't a member of Basque, it's time to join now. Basque, looking after your sport, looking after you.